You found Wicked on Wisconsin, your one-stop podcast for all things Packers, Brewers, Bucks, and the rest of your favorite teams from all over the state of Wisconsin. We're powered by Wisconsin Sports Heroics online at wisportsheroics.com and the Wisconsin Podcast Association. And now, here's your host, Mike Wicked. Yo, what's up? All right. So I said the Packers would go to Minnesota and handle the Vikings. I was wrong. Some things I didn't expect. Some things came out of that game and a whole lot of questions. Before I start, all right, I have said this before and I will say it again until I stop talking about the National Football League for a living as a fan. Week one doesn't matter. I know someone's going to say, well, Wicked, you know, if they're tied, you look back at this division. Get... Calm down about week one. All right. I said it last year. No, they're not related. What the Packers did at New Orleans, it is not 100% related. Oh, they stunk at New Orleans, and now it's okay that they didn't look so great against the Minnesota Vikings. That's not what I mean. All right. One is not because of the other. Matt LaFleur's teams, for whatever reason, have scored 10 points or less in each of the first games of the last three years. And that's an easy thing to, to look at and say, hmm, Matt LaFleur doesn't play a lot of starters in the preseason. In the last two years, he hasn't played any starters in the preseason. And they've come out flat. Now, last year they came out flat against New Orleans. This year they come out flat against the Minnesota Vikings, a lot of questions, two very different scenarios, obviously, with the wide receiver room being number one. Didn't think we were going to have so many questions about the defense coming out of game one, but guess that's where we're at right now. So speaking of questions, I've got a whole list of them here, all right? And I will again tell you, week one doesn't matter, all right? Just like last year when the defense was horrendous, in Joe Barry's first game against the Saints. And what did I say to you? I said, call me at Halloween. Call me when you get to October. Call me when you get to Halloween. If it still looks this bad, all right, I'm jumping on the train. It's a new install, new system, new defensive coordinator. This year, a lot of new pieces on offense. It wasn't going to be pretty out of the gate. It just wasn't. And this definitely was not pretty. But I'm not freaking out. I'm not calling for... Anything major to happen, all right? I do have a lot of questions, though. Like, what Aaron Rodgers was that? (laughs) Like, what Aaron Rodgers was that really? At times, it just looked like it was reminiscent of the hero ball from the days of, I need to run around for 40 seconds. Hopefully somebody can get open. I'll just heave it. I wish Jordy was there. I wish Driver was there. I wish Devontae Adams was there. And Jake Bukowski, if you want to find – or Jake, Peter Bukowski, excuse me – Peter Bukowski, if you want to find somebody who's doing God's work, who is giving you every angle on Twitter, follow Peter on Twitter. He's giving you the angle of every play, at least from a Packers offensive standpoint when it involves Aaron Rodgers. He's giving you every angle, not only from the angle we watch the game at on TV, but also the all-22, the end zone look. And the dude's doing some God's work. So either you're on the side of Rodgers is holding on to the ball too long, which at times it seemed like he did a couple of plays, or a guy who is not on the same page with anybody. And I don't think you want to hear this, but that's not that surprising. Game one with Christian Watson, with Romeo Dubs, with Sammy Watkins, with Randall Cobb. Game one for the first time in a year with Robert Tunyon. I mean, he hadn't played with these guys all last year when they went 13-4 and four and won the division, and we know what happened with the Niners. So it's not crazy to think, Rodgers, even the great Aaron Rodgers, needed a game or might need two games. It may not look perfect at the, uh, the in week two against the Bears coming up on Saturday night. And you know what? That's okay. Because I know that far too often we're like, man, everything's got to be perfect. Everything's got to be great. It's week one. I think I saw a stat that teams that didn't play any starters whatsoever in the regular season went like three and seven in week one. So it wasn't just Green Bay that was unprepared, not ready. Whatever. A lot of teams struggle the way Green Bay did. And with the 17-game schedule, you're actually afforded a little more leeway 
when it comes to getting your S together, <laughs> if that's the way to put it. Um, I don't worry about Aaron Rodgers. I don't think you should worry about Aaron Rodgers. I think we've all come to understand that worrying about Aaron Rodgers is silly. But he looked like a guy who was not on the same page with everybody. The offense wasn't on the right page. Um, just in the, the, the chemistry needs to build, and it will build. It's, again, call me in October. Call me when we get to, to uh, Halloween. And I know that there are podcasts and sports talk guys out there that are screaming and yelling and calling for this. And I'm not that guy. So if that's what you're looking for, you got the wrong podcast. You know, there are other problems on, uh, on the offense. How does Aaron Jones only get eight touches? And it's easy for someone from like me to sit here and say, Jones needs touches and Watson needs touches and Sammy Watkins needs touches and Randall Cobb needs touches and A.J. Dillon needs touches and Robert Tunyon needs touches and so and so and so and so and so and so. And don't get me started on Alan Lazard when we ever see Lazard back. But I would argue that the most important skill player on that football team, not named Aaron Rodgers, is Aaron Jones. And I did a story a year ago that the magic number for Aaron Jones is 22 touches. And the Packers were almost undefeated in the 12 games in his career where he got 22 touches. And he got eight. (laughs) He got eight. Eight touches for one of the top ten running backs in the National Football League, a guy that probably has the best hands on the roster. He's so versatile. I mean, you saw what Javante Williams did for for the Broncos on Monday night. Aaron Jones is that versatile, if not more. He's that special, if not more. I don't quite understand the eight-touch thing and ten carries total, I think, for A.J. Dillon. I love A.J. Dillon. Those guys got to get the football. Look at my notes here. Those guys have to get the football. That just I'm not breaking down sports like you've never heard it before, and I don't know what the game plan was going in. I don't know what Aaron Rodgers' mindset was going in. But Aaron Jones had five carries for 49 yards. That's a nine and a half, almost 10 yard average. Aaron Jones has the fifth highest yard per carry average in the history of this league. But he got five carries and three catches for 27 yards. Every time he touched the ball, statistically, he picked up nine yards. But he only got the ball eight times because there was a lot of Rodgers running around. There was a lot of Rodgers scrambling. There was a lot of Rodgers running for his life, which brings up another question. What's happening with this offensive line? No Jenkins, no Bakhtiari, a lot of problems on that offensive line. So if your quarterback is running for his life and your tackles aren't great, and then John Runyon went out, Jake Hansen somehow got a really good grade from Pro Football Focus, and I don't know how. But if your offensive line is, I don't want to say in shambles, but is very questionable, why are you putting the pressure on them? Why why aren't you alleviating some of the pressure on your offensive line, who seems to be struggling with pass protection, facing an angry Zadarius Smith and a healthy Daniel Hunter? Why are you putting pressure on them? and thus forcing your quarterback to either scramble or make bad throws or take sacks. Why would you do that? Like that that's a one of the big question marks I have in this in this game. Can't run the or I'm sorry, can't pass the ball? Struggling for pass protection? Run the ball. That's not a great de- defense you're facing. You know, when Runyon went out, Zach Tom came in. I thought he played really well over there on that side. Run behind that dude. Why wasn't there, he there the entire time? This is a, what, a mid-late round pick? Rookie? Seems to fit the system really well? Like, I, I, there's just, offensively, those are some of the questions that I had. You know, I, I could go to the, the play late on third and one, and they throw. You know, when the game was still somewhat within reach, within two scores and two two point conversions on third and one, you have A.J. Dillon. Slam him up the middle, put the ball in his belly, and let him go. 
You know, I, I know that there's this seemingly, and I don't know if this was Lafleur's call or this was Aaron Rodgers' call, but again, it goes back to Aaron Rodgers and Matt Lafleur putting everything on the MVP's shoulder. And I get it. Aaron Rodgers is great. The dude took some shots. Like, you have other guys on offense who can make plays for you. You got maybe the best backfield in the National Football League. You're one of the five best backfields in the National Football League. Utilize them. Use them. Use A.J. Dillon. Use Aaron Jones. That's a special pair that you have back there. And again, caveat, week one, I understand. And things will hopefully change. Like, that's the one thing I wanted to see. Without Devontae Adams, will they utilize the running backs more? Will they? Will, will Aaron Rodgers spread the ball around more? Well, he did spread the ball around. I mean, A.J. Dillon caught five passes. Romeo Dubs caught four passes. Robert Tunyon, three. Christian Watson, two. More on him in a second. Josiah DeGuara, Aaron Jones, Sammy Watkins, Juwan Winfrey, Randall Cobb. Even Tyler Davis caught a ball. Dude didn't catch a pass all offseason. He didn't catch a single ball in the preseason, and he caught one in the opener. You know, I know it's going to take a lot of time for the chemistry and for the trust factor. Getting back to Christian Watson, it's going to take a lot of time for that trust to be built between Rodgers and Watson and Rodgers and Dubs. And it happened in the first, the first quarter, the first play of the game. Can you imagine the craziness inside of Cheesehead Nation that would have exploded had Christian Watson caught that 75-yard pass? It was perfect. It was in his hands. And I'm not going to blast Watson. He came out and said, look, that's a play I'm never going to not make again. He understands. That's the biggest moment of his entire life. The biggest moment of his entire life. And he's a rookie on the, the biggest stage in all of sports. Catching a bomb from Aaron Rodgers. And it just went through his hands. Like, it happens. I am still a huge Christian Watson fan. You know if you listen to the podcast what a big fan of Christian Watson I am. I mean, I was on my deck with my buddy Alex, and we're watching the game, and I'm like, he's got him. He's got him. And it went through his hands. Now, he and Dubs both made that made a mistake in the first quarter. Dubs turned inside. Rodgers threw the ball outside. And it's so amazing how much people are picking up on Aaron Rodgers' eye contact, staring people down. When Tom Brady stares down a receiver who went the wrong way or dropped a pass, people compliment Tom Brady on his leadership, his moxie. An old-school quarterback. But when Aaron Rodgers does it, because of the persona he's got, people are like, mm, Aaron, upset, disgruntled, not happy, moody. It's garbage. It's garbage. So the, 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 the chemistry will come. I'm not worried. Not worried at all. If the chemistry still isn't there by Halloween, I'll be very, very worried. I think you you probably should be, too. Um, I'm going to get to some stuff on defense, too, here in a sec. Like, I have a whole bunch of questions that I've been going through. Why not give Aaron Jones the ball the more? Uh, give Aaron Jones the ball more. Matt LaFleur, have we learned our lesson yet? About the preseason? Why wasn't Zach Tom playing more? Why put all that pressure on your offensive line? If they're going to struggle, why not alleviate some of that? We'll get to some defensive stuff here. Um, shout out to our sponsor. You know the old phrase, I feel the need, the need for speed. That's come back into mainstream recently, hasn't it? Thank you very much, Hollywood. Well, if you're in the need for speed, go see my guys at uh, Great Lakes Dragway in Union Grove, Wisconsin, the fastest quarter mile in the Midwest. If you're a gearhead, you love to drive. Just like to sit and watch those machines fly down the track. Check out my friends at GreatLakesDragaway.com, all right? They're waiting for you right now. The entire schedule is up. Hot rods, trucks, nitrous nights. Uh, plus, if you're a Packers fan, you can go hang out and meet my guy, Gilbert Brown, Saturday, September 24th. That's right. The Grave Digger is going to be there. They're open all year until the snow flies, all right? Snow falls, can't race cars. We all understand that. We're not dumb. Uh, full schedule, GreatLakesDragaway.com. And plus, I know that we're in September. We just got done with week one. Christmas is coming for the gearhead in your life, greatlakesdragaway.com. They've got gift cards, greatlakesdragaway.com. And thanks to their uh, continued support of the podcast. Appreciate it. So please go support our sponsors. I know the biggest story out of this one, besides Christian Watson dropping that ball and Aaron Rodgers 
eye contact was Justin Jefferson. I mean, the dude was a monster. Nine catches, 84 yards, two touchdowns. Reminds you of Julio Jones or Larry Fitzgerald in the playoffs or Plaxico Burris. I mean, which big receiver do I need to bring up that's going to bring up memories or nightmares for you if you're a Packers fan? It seemed like he was able to get wherever he wanted to go, and the Packers were never coming out of that zone. Now, I saw a stat right before I started recording from Sam Holman, and Sam does a really good job um, from Wisconsin Sports Heroics. does a really good job of breaking down film. And his stat on whether or not they doubled Justin Jefferson enough 70% 70% of the time, they doubled Justin Jefferson. Didn't feel like it, did it? Like, I'm not going to knock Sam. I know he watches the game, re-watches the game, studies film, keeps those stats up. But it didn't feel like they were doubling him 70% of the time. It felt like it was always Eric Stokes getting burnt or I saw Preston Smith getting burnt, Razul Douglas getting burnt. You know who I didn't see getting burnt? Jair Alexander. Now, the quote from Jair, who, I, if memory serves, they just gave a four-year and $84 million contract to, right? Like, they just gave him a boatload of money. Make sure you get those dollars right. Four-year, $84 million, $30 million guaranteed. Missed a lot of last year. Some would argue the best defensive back in the National Football League. Why not put that dude... On Justin Jefferson. Oh, they tried. They did three times. That's right. They did put him on there three times. It was offensive pass interference, an incomplete. It was a good day. It was a real good day. I mean, why wouldn't you do this more and more with the guy that you're paying a bunch of money to? The third one was a pass breakup. Got lost in my notes. I apologize. You know, Matt LaFleur's quote when he was asked about that. You would have to commit to man coverage. I don't know how else you would get it done. Fine. Put the best defensive back you've got on their best wide receiver. Make K.J. Osborne and uh, Adam Thielen coming off an ankle injury beat you. I'm fine with that. All right? If one guy is literally torching you, turning everybody in your defense to toast, do something. Make an adjustment. Now, we'll credit the Packers' defense that did finally wake up in that second half, and they did get a lot of pressure on Kirk Cousins, and you have to give credit to Cousins, by the way. Cousins actually stepped up and made some plays, including that stupid play where he stepped up, he was getting hit, threw it 65 yards, and if it wasn't for Justin Jefferson being wide open by 15 or 20 yards, it would have been incomplete. But you know what? He was wide open by 15 or 20 yards, and it was a massive gain. I just don't understand the reluctance to do so. Why you don't want to change anything there? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me why you don't give the opportunity to Jair Alexander to take on a guy that he claimed he wanted all week. I mean, you probably read or saw the quote. Jair said to my guy Rob Domovsky, All week I was asking for that matchup, but it ain't about me. It's about the team. It's about me. If it was my way, you know what I would be doing. Packers were set on playing zone. That's not good, especially when you're playing against an offense you haven't really seen before. You know, this offense is, is going to be very reminiscent of what Sean McVay runs in L.A. with the Rams. A lot of motion, a lot of crossing. Well, if you are a defensive coordinator or if you're one of the great wide receivers the Packers are going to face the rest of the year, you got to hear that and think, oh, man, all we got to do is run some deep or intermediate crossing routes and the Packers aren't going to do anything? Huh. Well, that sounds great. I mean, you just gave the game plan to Darnell Moody for the weekend or to Mike Evans in, in two weeks. Or Terry McLaurin or Stephon Diggs when the Packers play the Bills. Or Amon Ross St. Brown twice. Or CeeDee Lamb. Tyreek Hill on Christmas. You're telling me that they're not watching this film thinking, well, all we got to do is run some kind of crossing route with the fastest player in the National Football League, and he's going to be open. Because he is. Because he is. 
Green Bay got lots of pressure. Their front seven was fine. They got lots of pressure on uh, pass rush. Their front seven was fine. They got lots of pressure on Cousins. But the times he was able to step up and make throws, he hit the best wide receiver or the guy that Aaron Rodgers called the best player in the National Football League whenever he wanted. And I just don't understand how you don't make an in-game adjustment if you're Joe Barry or you're Matt LaFleur. And I feel like LaFleur almost was defending his guy Barry without saying it, saying, or you can almost hear him say, Yep, we needed to do that, and we didn't, and we're going to from now on. Because he's going to have to. If Matt LaFleur can't get Joe Barry to adjust mid-game, then what are we doing here? You know, if they're playing Darnell Mooney this weekend, Sunday Night Football, and, and Mooney's got six catches for a buck 12 and a score in the first half because he's running everything 15 yards at a post or some kind of big crossing route, all he's got to do is get between the linebacker and the safety, and Justin Fields will be able to hit him. If they're not going to do anything different, Packers are in trouble. This Super Bowl defense that Brian Gutekinds has built through free agency and the draft is going to be toast because they just gave the game plan to everybody on how to get through that defense. They did. They did. A shout-out to our other sponsor, by the way, my, my good friend Nick Packard. Now, if you are a small business owner, you got to call Nick because Nick's going to help you get seen on the Internet. This is the most important thing out there. We're all on our phones. We're all on the Internet. We're all using our laptops. And my guy, Nick, is located right there in Franklin, Wisconsin. You can find him, nickpackard.com. He's a big Packers fan just like you. And he's going to help you bring marketing answers. Find out how to get seen. Like, he's going to ask you questions like, what's your SEO? And you're like, well, Wicked, I don't know what my SEO is. And I'll be like, I didn't know what SEO was. It stands for search engine optimization. Basically, it's like when you hit the Google button or you tell Siri or Alexa to do something, how many does it take to get your business to the top of that list? That's where Nick comes in. He manages projects from start to finish. That way you can track and see everything going on fully transparent. If you're trying to grow your small or your medium-sized business and you want to up your marketing, give my dude Nick Packard a shout. NickPackard.com. You're going to get a free digital ecosystem assessment. If you want to know exactly what your social channels, your email marketing, your website is doing on the Internet, on the interwebs, on the Information Superhighway, sign up on his website, NickPackard.com, NP Connect. The marketing agency redefined online today, nickpacker.com. And please tell him Wicked sent you, okay? Would love for you to do that. Grow your business. Get a hold of my guy, Nick. He's right there in Franklin. So those are some of the things that I'm just like, I I, I don't freak out after week one. What do I think is going to happen? I think they're going to be fine. I still think, like I've said before, like I said last week, by the time we get to October, the end of October, sorry, the end of uh, September, they're still going to be in first place in the division. I think the offense will figure itself out by the time we get to Halloween. Maybe I was a bit premature on Rodgers' chemistry with the young wide receivers. At some point, you know, coming in, I have said before, and I, I believed it. I don't know if I believe it now. Wide receivers one, two, and three were Lazard, Watkins, and Cobb. I think in a few weeks that's going to be changed, and Watson and Dubs are going to be in that mix and Lazard. It looks like Cobb is slow. He's reliable. I don't think he's a game breaker. I don't have. I don't think I saw enough out of Sammy Watkins to make me believe one way or the other. Um, but there was a play in this game where Sammy. I'm sorry. Check that. Christian Watson got to over 20 miles an hour clocked. At some point, Rodgers is going to have to buy in to that speed and Romeo Dubs speed, and it's just going to take time. It really is going to take time. I love the fact that he threw that bomb in the first play. I'm very upset I didn't catch it. <laughs> um, but he eventually, I think, is going to wind up trusting those guys because they have a weapon that nobody else has, that nobody can contend with. And when you play Minnesota again, that's a mediocre secondary. It's a mediocre defense. You take away uh, Daniel Hunter and Zedaria Smith, you can't do that. It's a subpar defense. But I think when they play Minnesota again, which is in like two and a half months or something, you're going to see a very different Packers team offensively. I hope you see a different Packers team secondary-wise. Their front seven, again, no issues. Uh, losing Chris Barnes for half a season, that's going to suck. I hope Quay Walker can go with the shoulder. That guy was making plays all over the field before he got banged up. I love that kid. But on the offense, it's just going to take a little bit of time. 
And I think I go back to what I said at the beginning. Get the ball to Aaron Jones. Get the ball to A.J. Dillon. Get the ball to Aaron Jones. Trust these young kids. I think they're going to make a statement on Saturday. I think we're looking at like a 42-10 kind of game on Saturday night. I think Green Bay now is hearing everyone tell them how bad they are. I saw one power ranking today. Green Bay was 29th. Can you tell me there are 28 teams better than the Green Bay Packers in the National Football League right now? No, there are not. There are not. I'm telling you. I don't freak out, man. I don't. And if you're one of those people expecting me to rake everyone over the coals after week one, wrong podcast. But thank you for checking out the podcast. Make sure you follow, like, rate, all those things. Um, Subscribe, whether you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, or wherever you get your podcast. Thank you for checking it out. I really appreciate it. Uh, Don't forget, Wicked on Wisconsin airs every week. Go to uh, wisportsheroics.com. Those guys write a lot of stuff so you can keep up with the Packers, the Bucks, the Brewers, all those things. Uh, That is it. We will do it again next week. Hopefully talking about a Packers win. I believe we'll be talking about a Packers win. And if we're talking about the 0-2 Packers, then we really got a lot to talk about. Thanks for checking out the podcast. Uh, Again, my name is Mike Wicket. This has been Wicket on Wisconsin. As always, go Pack Go, go Bucks, and go Brewers.